what is the best driver of 2024? I've tested 22 models from the biggest brands in the game to find out. Now, this is the first episode of a new series called Pick My Sticks, where we're going to be going through all the best models through the bag and finding out what clubs I'm going to be using this season. So what driver will I be putting in play? Let's go find out. So there's about a hundred different ways I could do this video, but it makes it quite complicated, especially given the amount of models we've got on the market this year. But really, this is going to be about picking my driver. So I've gone through, I've hit literally hundreds of balls with all the drivers from this year and also all the lines that are still in line for this year. So I take Titleist or Wilson who haven't relaunched this year, but still have models in play. We've also hit them as well. Now I've narrowed it down to my favorite model from each brand. I'm gonna hit that, talk through that, talk through the other models, why they might necessarily not suit me, but also which people they might be really good for. Now there's not really a logical way to start. So we're just gonna go alphabetically in brand order. So first we've got Callaway. It's really awkward if at one point someone figures out I've not done it in alphabet closet. If I do that, just just no one say anything. Just act like it didn't happen. So there are three main models in this year's Paradigm AR Smoke range. We've got the Max, which is kind of sits in the middle of the line. We've got the Max D, which is the most draw biased. We've got the Triple Diamond. And then there is also a Max Fast, but that's not really that widely available yet. Um, that's a lighter swing speed model designed for people with slower swing speeds who want to get more height, hit it further. I haven't tested that, so not included in this. Now, my favorite is the Max, which probably isn't surprising given it's that middle of the line model and very similar to the paradigm I gamed last year. Now, the Max D was a great driver, more draw bias, not necessarily what I needed, but if you're someone who does want to shape the ball right to left more, that could be a great option. And actually I found this has really good flight properties. It flies really high and I was really impressed with the ball flights. So if you're someone who needs to hit it higher, wants to draw it more, definitely an option. <laughs> Not necessarily what I need in my game. Now, the triple diamond was pretty impressive. And in terms of that low spin option, I think that's a really good one to look out for if you're someone who wants that head. The profile is pretty small <laughs> on off-center strikes. I felt like I lost a little bit of spin, which isn't necessarily what I need because I'm already quite a low spin player. But actually, in terms of distance, this was probably the one of the longest on the market this year. So if you're up there for something that spins less and goes a long way, a great option, but personally for me, I just found this one a little bit more forgiving. Now, I think one of the reasons I like this driver so much is it feels familiar. I obviously gamed the Paradigm last year, and in terms of kind of profile behind the ball, it feels really comfortable. I'm not sure I love the grey as much as I love the blue from last year, but it is kind of a minor point. Now, I have seen gains in this from the Paradigm moving into this new model. And in terms of distance, it's probably one of the really strong performers. On average, I got 227 yards carry and my longest shot got up to 233 yards. I would say in terms of spin, especially on off-center strikes, I did see this drop off a little bit more compared to some other models. I felt like my distance still stayed up, but didn't necessarily keep the trajectory of my ball flight, which is definitely something to kind of consider in terms of consistency. Now, there's kind of a combination of high fly and lowish spin here. So I'm spinning at about 2 1, 2 2, launching at like 16, which is probably kind of optimal for distance, but I'm just a little bit conscious that so when I don't quite catch it and the spin drops, it is dropping low off. So that's something to consider at this point. What was next in half bet? Oh, yeah. So three models in the dark speed lineup this year. It was kind of hard to pick a favorite, actually. Of the three, I could see in my initial testing, there was really three clear, clear different models. When you move from the LS to the X to the Max, you see a big increase in spin height and forgiveness. And initially I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll pick the X in the middle, but actually I was really impressed with the ball flight and the height of the Max, so I've gone for that option. The LS definitely spun <laughs> not enough for me. I just wasn't hitting it high enough. It's really good for distance if that's what you want, but personally it didn't quite suit my game. It was really close between the, between the X and the Max, but actually what I've done is gone up to the Max and just lofted it down a little bit. So I'm getting kind of that maximum forgiveness, but in a slightly lower launch than I would get in this if it was set at standard. Oh my God. 
Now, in terms of aesthetics, the Dark Seed range has to take it probably for the best looking behind the ball. I just love that all matte black finish and the shaping. And I like the fact, even though this is like the biggest model, it doesn't feel really big behind the golf ball. Also plus points for the head cover, because it's really cool. <laughs> I actually really like the sound of this as well. I feel like it's a bit more responsive and like you can kind of tell what you turn off the club face a bit better than you can with some other models. Now, plus point of this is you get a really nice high ball flight. It's really easy to launch. And in general, it's just easy to kind of hit and get in the general area you're going, which is obviously a massive plus point for loads of people. Now, I would say it's potentially a little bit more draw bias that I need. I've tried to offset that a little bit by kind of changing the loft, which tweaks the club face. And potentially on like off center toey strikes, it does turn a little bit more than maybe some of the most forgiving options this year. Alphabet call done nearly went wrong then because I just went for ping. Talking about the alphabet, we're at S for subscriber and we're looking for a few extra ones. Did you know 75% of people who watch my videos aren't actually subscribed to the channel? It makes a huge difference if you hit that subscribe button. So please give it a click and give us some more support for this channel. Mizuna, wasn't necessarily expecting a new model from this year. ST230 Max, the so same line, but a more forgiving model. And what I really like about this is the player's feel to it. It's designed to be a really forgiving model, but actually it sits great behind the ball. Sound off the face and the feel is so good. It's gone wild. I have to redo the testing. Still good. <laughs> now they've got a new face material in here and I think that's a huge result. Not only is it meant to be delivering more ball speed, but well, as I was saying, I just really like the feel of that. It has a real player's feel to like a almost game improvement, more forgiving club. And I really like the balance of that. Now in terms of average carry distance, this got up to 227. <laughs> it's quite a common number across the testing. And my longest shot got out at 233. What I like about this is the spin was a little bit higher. So it felt like if I missed struck it a bit, it kind of helped me keep the ball in the air. The only thing that I slightly wasn't sure about is they've gone for a longer shaft this year to kind of bring up that club head speed to offset the fact there's a bigger head, more weight moved around for forgiveness. And I don't know if it quite balances well with that forgiving story because it feels like you've got a longer club so you're not necessarily striking as much out the middle. So you're having to use the forgiveness of the head. I wonder if maybe the max story might have been better with a shorter shaft that felt like you could strike the middle more consistently. Now, when you hit this good, this driver is really good and it feels great as well. I just wonder about the inconsistencies with the longer shafts. Some of the toe strikes I hit just couldn't quite control them as well as I would like to. I felt like I hit a few more than I should have done because of the length of the club. Ping kind of shocked us all with a release this year, and it's one of the big 10K stories. This is all about forgiveness, but actually I found when I've hit it, that's not the only thing you get. It is one of the longest models I've tested, and it does get pretty good club head speed data for the size of the club head, which is all pretty surprising and didn't really, didn't really feel like it was possible. Now, obviously in this lineup, we've got the existing max range that was there before. We've got the LST and we've got the Max D, which is the draw bias model. The draw bias model in this lineup is probably one of the best if you want to straighten out your ball fly. I have seen some people who should hit the ball off the planet over here, hit it straight with that club. So if you slice it, <laughs> my advice would be go and get one of those. Now, in terms of LST, I really like this model. I think it's probably the one of the easiest to hit low spin models on the market, but not necessarily quite as long as some of the others. In terms of the max, it's obviously really good, but I feel like this is kind of just replaced it because if you were gonna go into that model, why wouldn't you just go into this? Now, this is probably one of the models I've been most surprised with. I don't know if some of it's because I haven't gamed a ping drive for so long. I used them years ago, but just haven't really had one recently. Or the fact that the whole story was forgiveness, big head, and actually it seems to tick a lot of boxes. I hit a really good distance. I feel really comfortable with this club and it performs <laughs> really well, whether I kind of hit it perfect or not. I'd say my only slight reservations are, I wonder if it flies a little bit too low. I do have a nine head in this. I've lofted it at one degree. I wonder if maybe a 10.5 would be the best option. So slight reservations are maybe a little bit low, maybe a tiny bit, not enough spin. 
I'm off center strikes, but actually, it's been in mid 2000s on my good shot, so it's not too bad. I hit that last shot so good, I don't think I even need to hit another. There's another P next, so that makes the alphabet easier. PXG, new Black Ops line, also a very good head cover game. Don't know where my love for black head covers appeared, but it seems to be strong this year. It's funny because I got fitted <laughs> into the PXG last year and the setups between this year's driver and last year's driver could not be like more different. I've gone from a 7.5 degree head to a 10.5 degree head. The shaft is about an inch and a half shorter. It's a different weight. It's a different whole shaft setup. The weights have been flipped around in the head. It does show you like how if you change your swing, change your variables of how you're launching it, you might need something completely different. So all his take fitting in mind. And on that point, I would say I've been really impressed with PXG's fittings. They definitely know what they're doing. They've got the things set up and they really help you dial in. It was amazing how much I got this club from stock to this and how much it improved my dispersion, which I don't know why I'm always surprised when that happens as if like, why would they do fittings? <laughs> <laughs> they don't make you better. No. PXG have gone to a gloss finish this year, which I love. I think this sits great behind the golf ball, and I like the alignment at the front. I also like the fact they fitted me into a shorter shaft. Like, my whole remit this year is I'm going to hit more fairways. Like, I'm actually not that bothered if I hit it a little bit further or not, because I think if I want to hit it further, I'll just go and, like, work for that in the gym, get more speed. Like, what I want is consistency. And for me, it really focus on, like, the dispersion and consistency of the shot. So this shorter club just feels so good. It just feels like I'm going to hit the middle more often. And I guess that's half the battle, like feeling confident over the ball. Now, this driver fits in a funny spot because it's not quite 10K, but it also kind of is. So if you have the weights in certain settings, it gets to 10,000 MOI. Where I'm at, it's not, but it is one of the most forgiving models on the market. I love it when I hit it out of the middle. I really like the consistency of the fly and how easy it feels to hit. But I do think in like the drive for higher launch and max forgiveness, they might have lost a little bit of distance. But if my remit is to hit more fairways, can I have that as a reservation? I'm really not sure. <laughs> Now, I think the trouble this club's got itself in is because it's so close to 10K, I'm comparing it to other 10K models. And I'm not sure if the off-center strikes are just quite as consistent as they are elsewhere. But I just feel so comfortable with this club in terms of setup. So shout out to the fitter, I guess. <laughs> so in terms of distance, this averaged at 221. My best shot getting up to 226. The spin was like where I'd like to see it, so like 26. So it's never gonna drop off too low and I'm not gonna kind of get those shots that just dip off and disappear. The launch is really interesting. So it was high up at 17 and that was kind of one of PXD's big things for this launch. They want something that launches higher because for the majority of people, getting that higher launch is going to give you more carry distance. So I'm in kind of a funny spot with this driver, really, because it feels great. I love how confident it makes me feel over the ball and how consistent it feels like I'm going to strike it. But I know I'm giving up like six yards on the other drivers, but the dispersion is not tighter. But it does feel really good and I feel confident with it. And that's like half the battle on the course, isn't it? Just like being able to stand there and feel like you're going to hit a good shot. QI10, the first 10K driver on the market by about an hour. <laughs> Still historic. Three models this year, LS, low spin, QI10 in the middle, and the QI10 Max, which is the most forgiving. I love the LS model in this range, and I really liked the Plus last year. Actually, probably quite consistent for a low spin model, and to be honest, I could game that. It was a little bit longer for me compared to the other two models, but not by loads. But again, there's that slight thing where off-center strikes, loss of spin, didn't quite feel like I could get maximum control. The QI10 is actually quite funny because it's probably the only one where I put it behind the ball and it just looks open to me. There's kind of a little gap between the top line and the face and it, I just feel like I'm going to hit it right. So even though I like the consistency and the ball flight of it, it probably just wasn't for me. So actually my favourite is the Max, which is probably not what I was expecting when I first sat and heard the tech presentation. But actually Nelly Porter <laughs> and Colin Morikawa are using it, so who am I to say I can't use the most forgiven model? <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, Tailwind have gone to all gloss carbon crown. It looks so good. Like, I love it. I always thought I liked that alignment that they had at the front, but now I see this behind the ball, it looks fantastic. My only reservation is here. This is a big club head. Like, it is stretched. It's probably 
the head that looks the biggest out of the kind of 10k or the most forgiving models across the lineup which is not something i typically go for like i love something that looks small and compact and i think because this is all just one gloss finish there's no hiding that this club head is big now as much as i might have reservations about the way it looks i love the way the ball fly looks <laughs> and where it goes so i guess i've just you always got to accept the trade-off So this flew 228 yards on average, <laughs> so one yard further than some of the other models. My longest shot did only get out to 230, so not necessarily as long as we saw with some of the others in terms of the longest shot, but a little bit longer on average. And I just can't complain about that ball flight, like I love how high yet controlled it is. I do wonder how well it would be in like a crosswind on a Lynx golf course. But you know, it is pretty windy today, it has been pretty windy. On different days I've tested this and I've still managed to control. I have got a 10.5 head in this which I've lofted down and I do wonder if maybe a 9 would be the optimal spot because I'm currently launching this at like 100 feet. I've got like 16 launch angle and then like 2,700 spin on average. Potentially a little bit high because it's getting up to the 3,000s on some shots. If I switch into a 9 head that would definitely drop down a little bit. I think that's probably <laughs> the sweet spot where maybe 95 feet a tad less spin would be perfect. Now the big thing about this is I can literally hit it anywhere on the face and it seems to go straight. I do think there is a little bit of draw bias to this so actually maybe the 10.5 lofted down a bit more that kind of opens the face up would also be an option because I don't like to see the ball go left. That would be my only slight reservation here is like in a neutral setting you can miss it left which I am a little bit conscious of. Tight list. Second year of their launch season. Obviously, they've got the one, two, three, and the four in the TSR range. The TSR two is definitely the one that suits me the most. It just gets me the right kind of spin launch variables across that range. Now, I had this in play for about six months at least after this came out. Really liked it. I love the way it sits behind the ball. It's very compact. My good shots are great, as you can see there. I was kind of like questioning why did this come out of the bag? The only thing I think is it's the shaft is a little bit lighter than what I have in other models and sometimes I just feel like I can just whip it around and hit it anywhere and on those kind of toey strikes which I am partial to sometimes the spin does drop down, drop down quite a little bit. So again believe it or not this average 227 yards of carry my longest up at 231. Say this is a second year product, it is still a great contender for going in the bag this year. Last but not least, Wilson. Probably their biggest and best driver launch last year, the Dyna Power Range. Two models, I've gone for the Carbon because actually I felt like I got a little bit more distance with it and I wasn't really giving up any forgiveness. My dispersion was basically the same with both models in this lineup. This looks great behind the golf ball, it's super compact, <laughs> I really like. And I actually do like the alignment feature and the kind of contrast on the club head here. Now, this is literally probably one of the most stock models I've been given, as in the least fit to me at all. So it's actually quite surprising to me how well I hit this. I averaged 226 yards, on average in terms of carry distance. My longest got up to 232 and actually like that middle strike is a really impressive ball flight and I like the sound here like the face sounds fast it's a little bit probably higher pitched than some of the models but it sounds really quick and sounds and feels like a proper player's club. Now my only slight reservation is I can definitely hit this a little bit further left than some models when I catch it out of the toe. It's not quite as forgiving, but then if you think of the quality of the good shot and how like little you're giving up really relative to the price point of this, like pound for pound, like surely it has to be like the best drive to back. What an interesting conundrum. All the drives perform really well this year, to be honest. And when you look at my testing, the <laughs> numbers in terms of distance were pretty consistent there wasn't really one model that was massive outlier in that area and it wasn't my biggest focus so really what i've kind of honed in on is which clubs just feel good to me and also which ones had the tightest dispersion and i felt like when i got that toey strike which is my bad shot i could keep it in play because that's super important to me i play a lot of tournament golf you're always going to hit bad shots. You're always going to hit off-center strikes when you're under pressure. So when I do that, which club 
is going to let me play well enough. So the three I've ended up with are the PXG Black Ops, the Ping G430 Max 10K, and the TaylorMade QI 10 Max. And it's like, where do you go from here? The PXG feels so comfortable. Like, I feel really good with it, especially the length of it. It just feels so controlled. But I'm giving up distance and the dispersion. It's just a teeny little bit not quite as good as these off center. So it's going to have to go. <laughs> Honestly, I'm literally splitting hairs between these two. Like, I've been going back and forwards, back and forwards, back and forwards. And it's quite interesting because what I'm like concerned about with one is like the opposite of the other. So the ping's probably slightly low in ball flight, doesn't quite get enough launch. Then the tailor I'm like, oh, it launches so good, so high. But is that going to work all the time in all conditions? Like, I do play quite a lot of golf in the wind because I'm from the UK. It's hard to avoid. And I just wonder if sometimes it will go a little bit too high. But then I do think that lower shot with the ping just doesn't quite get me the maximum distance. And it does mean that kind of toey flight is also even lower <laughs> and less spinny. Honestly, I'm really splitting hairs between these two. I mean, this one literally a yard further. The dispersion was so tight between the two. I have used the ping more though, but today I think the tailor-made just felt a little bit better. So if I'm playing the Scottish Arm at Troon, I might be cursing myself when I'm launching it really high. But honestly, like the heel and toe strikes with this, I still pitched in the dispersion of a green in my fitting. And my mantra this year is I'm going to hit more fairways. I'm going to play more sensible golf. So hopefully the QI10 Max is going to help me do that.